friends. Hey, Nora. How are you all doing? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, great. Well, you know, welcome to our first public tour of the 25th annual exhibition of art by Michigan prisoners. I hope that those of you here have had some time to take a look at the site, enjoy the works. Um, and what our plan is, is I will share my screen in a moment um, and do a brief orientation to the site um, and highlight a couple of features um, that I hope you all can enjoy and especially features that are um, kind of new to the show in its online format. Um, and then we are joined this afternoon by two of our curators, Graham Hamilton and Martine Vargas, who will speak a bit about the process of assembling the show, highlight some works from the show that, um, that they'd like to, to speak about. Uh, and then we'll also have plenty of time for conversation, Q and A, if there are particular um, kinds of pieces or genres of art that you all wanna take a look at together, we'll have time to do that. Um, and we're also joined by my wonderful student, Lauren Ors, who helped out with some of the um, site design as well. So um, yeah, a bit of behind the scenes uh, tour <laughs> of the show today. Um, so I will uh, go ahead and share my screen um, and take a look at the show together. Let me just make sure I've got it up. Okay, so hopefully this looks familiar by now, <laughs> the homepage of our 25th annual exhibition. Um, on the homepage, you'll see an image um, that's a, a collage of some of the most uh, unique or striking works in the show. Um, and this collage really is meant to ev evoke the feeling of being in the gallery. One thing that our curators do every year um, is assemble what, what we refer to as the front wall, the first wall of art that viewers see as they walk into the gallery, that people who are walking past the gallery can see through the windows. Um, and it's, you know, often features some of um, our most well-known artists, some of the most unusual work. Uh, and so what we wanted to do was give viewers of the digital show, that same feeling of being drawn in, wondering about what kind of art is in here, um, getting a you know wide range of styles. You can see there are landscapes and abstracts and humorous pieces and 3D pieces. Um, so that that kind of serves as as the entry point into the show. Um, I would really encourage you all, if you haven't yet, to spend some time reading, reading through our about page, uh, which provides in some detail um, information about how we assemble the show. Um, and in particular, uh, there are several photographs on this page of, uh, of our curator group and volunteers uh, actually working with artists during the art selection uh, visits. Uh, and we were really grateful to some of the facilities this, this past year who were willing um, to help us take those photographs uh, and, and uh, capture those, those moments, those conversations between artists and, and curators. Um, and in addition to the page that describes the, the exhibition, uh, we also have a, a history of the annual exhibition, which, which goes into some more detail about how it was founded, the vision of the show uh, when, when it was founded 25 years ago, um, and some more detail about how the show has grown over time. Uh, the star of the show, though, most certainly is our artwork pages. So here what we've done is assembled um, several gallery pages that highlight um, some of the most common themes some of the um, different methods of making art or materials that, that artists use to make art to guide the viewer through, through the show. 
Um, and often when we, or not often, <laughs> always when we um, install the show in the actual gallery, um, our curators use themes like these um, to think about how they might install install the show. Um, so for instance, we often have a wall that's dedicated to animals and wildlife. And you will see an animals and wildlife um, gallery page here. So I would really encourage everyone to, to spend some time on these looking through each gallery page. Um, our wonderful um, curator, Alyssa uh, Baginski uh, created each of these pages. And as you scroll through, you're able to see the works together as you might see them on the wall in the gallery. Uh, one thing I wanna point out is that when you're looking at a gallery page, you can click on each individual work of art to see more information about it. So clicking on an individual piece will bring you to a page that, that highlights that piece. As I scroll down, you'll see some more information. The title of the piece, the name of the artist, the date it was created, the log number, which will be important if it's a piece that you want to purchase. Um, you will see the sale status, whether or not that piece is for sale, if it's been sold or if it's not for sale. Um, and you will also see the list price of the piece. Uh, one thing I wanna bring your attention to also on these, these art pages um, is this, this item uh, called artist statement. So PCAP welcomes every artist who submits a piece to the show um, to also provide an artist statement where they're welcome to talk about their um, artistic process, their inspiration for the piece, their relationship to PCAP. And one thing that we're able to do in the digital format is link every piece straight to its artist, its corresponding artist statement. Um, this has been a really exciting addition um, that we can do with the digital show. Typically in the gallery, we're able to print out a book of statements that people can um, look through, can read as they're in the gallery, but we just don't have the space or capacity to match uh, each artwork on the wall to its statement. Um, so this has been a really, uh, yeah, exciting, exciting addition to the show this year. So uh, if, if you've, another or another option for viewing the art um, aside from the gallery pages um, is this page called Browse All, which as the name would suggest, allows you to browse all of the art artworks. Um, here you'll see them uh, not in any thematic order or they're just presented here as the site calls them up. Um, so I would also, you know, encourage you to think about encountering the art in different ways as you're looking at the site. I think all of us who, um, you know, enjoy um, seeing uh, exhibitions in person also know that kind of each time you come back to a exhibition, you see something new, you know, you take a different path through the gallery, something else catches your eye. So I hope you'll be able to um, kind of mirror that experience on the site. Um, the page called Engage has several opportunities uh, to engage with the show and engage with the artists who created, um, created the art that you will see on the site. Uh, our, the first um, page here called Listen to the Audio Tour will allow you to do just that. Um, this was an audio tour uh, that was created with the physical gallery in mind. So you may hear references to the physical gallery, um, but you will also be able to listen to um, audio tour um, discussions about selected pieces that are highlighted as you scroll down the page. Um, our audio tour features our senior curator and co-founder, Janie Paul, um, curators Martin Vargas and Brian Pickin, and former curator, El Chen. So you'll be able to hear their voices as well. You can um, click over to sign the guest book by filling out this form on the site. Um, 
the artists are always so excited to get messages from from the guest book once the show closes we um print out all of the comments that came into the guest book and, and send those to the artists um you're welcome to direct a message to an art to a particular artist if there's a, a work that's really moved you um but we also very much welcome messages for the entire artist community Similarly, if you uh, find a piece that really moves you, speaks to you, sticks with you, I encourage you to nominate it or vote for it for the People's Choice Award. Um, voting for this award uh, will be open for the two, first two weeks of the show. Um, so until March 31st at noon, uh, at which time we will tabulate the votes and, and make an announcement about which piece has won uh, this year's People's Choice Award. Um, there are a couple other options for engagement, including writing a critique letter and doing some ekphrasis writing, which is a form of poetry that responds to art. Um, but I'll let you all explore those at your leisure. The Artist Voices tab uh, highlights those artist statements that I referred to earlier. Um, and this is where my student Lauren and our, our other student collaborator, uh, Rita, helped to pull these statements together, find statements that really um, spoke to each of the themes that we saw kind of coming out of that, of the body of work. Um, so it's another way to encounter the art, um, primarily by kind of going and starting with the artist's voice or their literal words. Um, as I'm sure you're all aware, we have a whole schedule of events, which you've obviously found since you're at our first public tour. Um, and uh, you are welcome to register for additional events on, on this page. Our purchase art page will take you to um, a form where you can make an appointment to speak to a PCAP cashier. Um, and the final thing I wanna highlight um, is in addition to being able to purchase art, you also have the option to make a donation to PCAP. Um, all of the proceeds of the sale of, of each artwork go directly back to the artists themselves, uh, which means that PCAP has to fundraise and raise all of the other costs of, of mounting the show, um, which are significant. Um, so I welcome you to consider that option as well. Um, so that is my, my brief orientation. So with that, I think I'll turn to Martine and Graham um, to speak a little bit about their, um, their experience as curators and highlight um, pieces that they, they wanna bring to your attention this afternoon. Mart Martin, would you like to go first or, or what would you prefer? I thought I'd, I was I was muted. Um, you can go first. Go ahead. I can follow you. Okay. Well, um, just wanted that was that was very nice, Nora. It's amazing. It's amazing how rich it it all comes out on that site. Um, I picked a couple pieces to share, with the intention not to dive too deep into the artistic side of it, but to talk about kind of some of the connections that are present with all of the artists. Um, this first piece is a piece by James Alexander. Um, he's in, uh, he's at Gus Harrison. But to me, it's a really beautiful piece just in itself, but it's also paper quilling, which is pretty amazing. Um, he's done a couple pieces. I've only ever seen him work in, in quilling. Um, he's got two pieces in the show this year. Um, but he's one of those artists that we met a couple years ago. Um, I commissioned a piece from him as a curator. Uh, he normally sells all of his work. Um, so, he, you know, he's probably making about, I don't know, 200, $250 from the show, at least on a good year. But it, it does start to speak of the relationships that we start to build with artists, um, which for me is extremely important. And a lot of my focus is that, that deep relationship with the artist. 
just the other day, he mm -hmm. sent us another piece, which is a donation. Um, so this is like a prime piece for us. Um, it's also, well, I'm sure we'll make it into the auction once we start to operate the auction again, which is again, intended to raise money for the exhibit. But um, just a very smart piece, very timely piece. Um, I think it would catch a really good price. And so this is one interesting way that we've always promote. Well, we, we, we advertise, but it's a way that artists can actually contribute to their own, their own programming. So I just wanted to use that as an example of just our focus on developing relationships with the artists and finding ways for them to contribute, participate, share their vision um, is a large part of what our programming attempts to do. Another piece, which I, again is a, a really beautiful piece and I'm sorry I'm not sharing these online. Um, so this is a piece it was painted by Roger Stevenson. Um, again, it's a beautiful piece. He really is a really talented artist. But again, the, the idea is the community that, that occurs inside. Um, of course, that helps the artists and the people around them and also helps us. The man in the painting is uh, John Lonchar. Um, he recently passed away. They denied his parole. Um, he was having some health conditions, probably would have liked to see him go home. But so Roger painted this as a tribute to John. Um, John taught a beginning drawing class at Macomb Correctional Facility. And he also promoted an advanced painting class. So again, when we go to Macomb on our visits, um, sometimes we'll meet with about, about 80 artists, but it's people like John um, that are teaching artists inside. I know Martin did a lot of instruction inside, you know, and so it's really something to tap into some of those facilities that also have their own programming. It, it lets us collaborate and emphasize each other's efforts in a really beautiful way. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share a couple there and just kind of give a little bit more of an idea of the more elaboration of relationships that occur that make, make the website such a rich experience because it's layered in such, in such good intention um, and effort and work and delivery and collaboration. And um, Again, I always love the term, the tip of the iceberg, you know, to see the show is really the tip of the iceberg. There's so much work that goes in to, to everything that shows. Um, and so that's what I was hoping to emphasize. Thanks, Thank you. Sam. And you're, you're in our studio right now where we photograph every single work. Yeah, I'm trying, we're packing up the 25th, getting it ready to ship. Um, yeah, we have a really amazing studio over by the football stadium, LSNA built. It's got a, you know, it's environmentally controlled. I know that goes without saying these days, but mm -hmm. it's not always the case. Our last studio didn't have quite that. Uh, they put in a vent hood. So at this point in time, once the art makes it here, we're able to do everything at one spot. Uh, they've got lowered ceilings with specialized lighting for photography. Um, I used to have to take all of the pieces up to the art school into the 3D plaster room under a vent hood to do shrink wrapping and then move them back. So it was, it was a lot of shuffling. Um, yeah, this new site has made it really, really good. Um, we also use it as kind of a satellite office. You know, during these times, uh, we're able to use it as a satellite office. Um, uh, we do our usually do our curatorial second passes here. Um, certainly, we're doing more Zoom these days, but uh, yeah, it's a good gathering spot for us and a very functional, very functional spot. So, yeah. Thanks, Graham. Yeah. Um, so I'll turn it over to Martin now. I can share my screen to highlight the pieces that he is going to talk about. So I'll pull that up now. So, would you like to start with? Bright future or? Um, 
Let me start with the other one, please. Uh, I like uh, Chaseline's work a lot because not very many people, um, first of all, I'd just like to say thank you, Nora and Alisa and, and Charlie, you guys did a fantastic job with this website and it has gone worldwide. I'm telling you, I mean, I was speaking to somebody from China yesterday uh, who used to be with PCAP. And she says she's, there was a lot of people that were watching this from China. So, I mean, PCAP has gone worldwide now. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, this piece to me, well, first I'd like to say that being a curator has been a fantastic opportunity for me. It's been great uh, going to the studio, which is almost like my second home now. I mean, I, I go there quite a bit. There's so many things happening in the studio, like Graham said. Um, first selection is obviously in the prisons. Second pass is at the studio. And so many other things happen there. So many other little programs that we've got working there. Uh, this past year has been uh, unbelievably traumatic to everyone, but because of COVID, obviously, but PCAP has taken this uh, dire and dreary year to, to take advantage of so many opportunities that weren't there before. So this is why you have, you know, PCAP online worldwide. And this is why we can also look at art and talk about art personally like this. And I just like to say that art doesn't have to be so fantastically well created to be good art. Uh, many famous people, artisans from past centuries have proven this. Uh, a very famous one is Picasso's dove, peace dove. So many people look at it and say, it's just a line drawing. Well, there's nothing wrong with line drawings. And to me, art that tells a story is so much more important to the world than uh, so, fantastic, technically drawn bird or bear or whatever, and nothing against birds and bears. I love them, but, when, but they don't really tell a story unless they are telling a story. But this piece, for example, so many people might look at it and say, oh, wow, why would they let something like this in a PCAP exhibit, especially the 25th? Well, this piece to me as a curator I like paintings that tell stories that come from the heart, from the mind, from a person's environment and personal life experience. Because, you know, that type of art to me, it's like a story. It is a story. And this artist, Chase Lean, Chase Lynn from Huron Valley Women's Facility, you know, she may not be a fantastic artist in a lot of people's lives but she's telling a fantastic story. And you'd have to read her bio on this painting in order to get the full meaning behind it. But there's this, to me, there's this young girl with a tear coming down, falling off her cheek, and she's calling it the real me at last. Um, you have to read her bio, but it's about her life, her past, her history, and her present now. She came out as a transgender woman. And I think that is so powerfully strong. It takes a lot of strength to be able to do that, to tell somebody this. But she didn't just tell somebody this. She's telling her story worldwide right now. And for her to have this image, you know, to represent her, what she is now, who she is now, feeling good about the fact that she can now you know, be the real her at last. That must be such a relief, but it must have taken such strength to be able to draw something like this and tell the world, you know what? I'm good with me. I like me. And I don't care if you do or if you don't, but this is me and I'm, and she's only going to get stronger for it. I can't wait to see more of her paintings in the future. And Peacock will show her, I'm sure. Uh, I, I am so glad that I got to see her story. I wish I could have met her and maybe someday I will in the future. Maybe Peacock will host her someday when she comes home. 
Uh, and the next piece is called Bright Future, Distant Past. Uh, by Dwayne Montney. He is, in my eyes, one of the most, if not the most, creative, imaginative artist that PCAP has right now. We have such tremendous art and great artists, but this one to me is so special because, um, well, I, I've known Duane for, oh, for years, a, over a decade. We created art together. And I remember when he first, when I first met him, he was a juvenile lifer as I was, and he still is, but his art was so, so powerful and dramatic, but it was so dark, so many skulls, so much death, so much pain, so much hate. And it was good, but it was just so dark. And he and I eventually got to talking because artists in a closed, confined environment are eventually going to talk to each other. And we had great communication. And he learned from me, I learned from him. But one of the things that I admire the most is the fact that he learned to tell a story and not just release his anger onto a canvas. This story is actually about me. You can tell by the white mustache. <laughs> uh, you can tell by the fact that this person is coming out of a dark grayish colorless environment. And that dark grayish colorless environment, if you look close, is a prison. And in the left, center left, there is a, a tallish tower like with a blue figure in, this, in the tower. And that is a guard tower. It's a prison gun tower. And I was making my way home from my distant past of being incarcerated. And I walked home into, uh, well, I'm saying home, but this is I'm walking out into the world, into my bright future that is filled with color, filled with so much so much color, so much vibrancy, so much life, so much, so much of everything. I mean, I, it's just uh, an amazing portrait to me of me that my friend created. And it just goes to show you that art doesn't have to be, uh, again, fantastically drawn to tell a story and stories in art just mean so much to the viewers and to the artists because they are releasing their dreams, their memories, their thoughts, their ideas, and not just copying something from a magazine or a book that is technically copyright violations and people can get in trouble for that. But to create something out of your mind that is like Montney's piece right here, just, just so, so bright and happy, even though it's, from a sad story, obviously. But anyway, that's my take on these two pieces. There's so many other pieces that are wonderful art. And I encourage you all to not just look at them, you know, today or later on or tomorrow, the weekend or whatever, but to also encourage people that you know to take a look at these pieces and share that, share Share the paintings, share PCAP stories, tell them to, you know, show up for another tour um, and to visit PCAP as much as they can and buy some art. Um, this is that fantastic art and it's inexpensive and you will enjoy it for the rest of your lives. And you are supporting those so many prison artists inside the men and women who need all the support they can get right now through this COVID period. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you so much. Um, yeah, thank you both for highlighting those pieces. Um, you know, one other, I would say, very cool feature that we're able to offer in being online is you can really get up close and personal with these pieces because the photography is so good. So 
Um, you know, I've pulled up here, bright future, distant past. And if I zoom in, you can just really see the incredible brushwork, the watercolors, Motney's use of, of pen and color, um, which to me has been a really exciting, um, you know, kind of added benefit of being able to look at these images online is to really get up close and personal in a way that even in a physical gallery, you often can't um, get to know a piece in a whole different way. Um, so I'll stop sharing now. We have plenty of time for questions or um, if there are pieces that anyone, uh, anyone here wants to, to hear about from our curators or kinds of pieces that you'd like us to, to highlight. Uh, really the floor is open for questions and conversation. Can I ask a question? Yeah, Megan. Um, um, I guess I, I was really, um, I, I found it really interesting on the website where you talk about kind of connections and community and then the fact that the um, you copy and send to each of the participants the guest book and also a sort of a kind of is it a catalog or a list of everyone who's participated and and just wondered if you can talk a little bit more about sort of that experience of connectivity and and sort of how that community people experience that community um yep martina graham do you want to um start with answering that question? I could start with answering a little bit of it, sure. Um, yeah, um, there's, we've always had an intention. And so as Nora had pointed out, the artists, when we, each year we send out an artist packet, um, we send it out to all of the PCAP participants. So that would be artists, writers, workshop participants. But we decided that we may as well flood the market with advertising if your bunkie is not an artist, but a, a writer, he might share that, that packet with you. So in that packet, there is a place for an artist statement. So with that, we're encouraging the artist to share what they want to say. And then as Nora pointed out with the guest book and critique letters, so we try to we try to have a way for the artist to share out to the world, but then also the guest book and the critique letters are intended to have it go the other way so that the world can comment back to the artist. Um, and then after the end of each show, we send out an artist packet that includes some of the things that you mentioned, Megan, you know, a catalog listing, um, critique letters if you've got it. Um, and actually the guest book is one of the most highly prized pieces. Um, so I might write something to you, Megan. Um, and of course that it might be directed to you. But the other thing that, that you can imagine is all of your friends that receive the book, although they might not have gotten a comment directed to them, they also share and celebrate into what you received, you know? Um, so yeah, it's definitely an intentional programming that that puts language language from the artist out and then back to the artist. Yeah. Thank you. And I, guess, I don't know if I fully understood your question, but taken off on what Graham just said, communication is such a, it's, it, it's such a, obviously it's a wonderful vehicle. That's the only way we can, you know, uh, express our, our thoughts and, and, and needs and wants and so forth. But, Prison is so confined, obviously, that you can't communicate through letters or phone calls or any way with other prisoners. Uh, so not only are you confined in your environment, but you're also confined from expressing and sharing thoughts and ideas, creative ideas and thoughts uh, among artists. But the, the video that's, that are sent in every year to every prison shows every piece of art that you're seeing is being shown inside the prison as well. Not right now, but it will be. 
so that every artist in every prison gets to see what other artists in other prisons are creating. And there's, I mean, it's, I remember when I was in there and I, when we received the videos and they're being shown all day long when we receive them, um, we go out to lunch, we go out to the yard, we go out to our, the activities that we're, you know, we're outside in the track, uh, running, walking, exercising, whatever. You hear people talking about art. You hear people asking each other, oh man, did you see uh, what Motney did over there in the dump facility? Oh, wow, man, you should see what so-and-so did. Or why did they pick that goofy looking girl, you know, picture to put it in an art show? I mean, there's all kinds of conversations, but conversation is stimulated about art, about artists. And there are not only people talking, but there are also people listening. People that have, don't, don't know anything about PCAP. They don't know about the art program. And they start asking questions. Um, 25, 26 years ago, PCAP had uh, less than 100 artists probably. And now you have over 800 artists. And next year you'll have even more. And I mean, art is just being created from the ground up inside prisons. And you have people that are gonna be in there for a long time who are just starting out as artists and in the future will become artists like Motney uh, and other great artists because they have the time to do it and they have the environment to do it and they have the support of PCAP and, and programs like this that create images to send back to every prison and people will look at them and they'll say, wow, I wish I could do that. Or not only that, but they'll also say, man, I can do better than that. And they sort of challenge themselves to create art that they would never have thought of before. And that's what's so fantastic about this program and all the, the feedback that goes back into the prisons through all the packets that PCAP sends every year. Thank you. Um, so I've, there've been a couple of questions in the chat that I, that I put some answers to. Um, so Jessica had asked about pieces that don't sell. Those are shipped to an artist's family or other designated uh, person that they, whenever an artist submits a piece, they, they also let us know who that designated person is. Um, let's see, uh, Ivana also asked, how do we let incarcerated folks know that PCAP exists? Um, I think either Graham or Martin spoke to this a little bit. Um, we send three times a year a, um, a newsletter to all of our incarcerated participants. And that newsletter goes out to, I think 1300 or 1400 people. Um, and it is uh, very, common for folks to share that newsletter with one another, with people in their units to spread the word about PCAP um, at facilities where we can offer workshops when they have it in person. Um, what we, we work with the staff at the facility to, to advertise the workshop. They'll post um, a notice about a workshop that's going to happen and ask for interest in, from people who, who might want to work, be in that workshop, which often draws people who've been longtime PCAP participants, as well as people who are new to the process. Um, so in some ways, you know, a lot of, a lot of spreading the word happens through, through word of mouth, through the connections and networks that Graham was talking about. Um, let's see, I, there's a couple other questions in the chat that I'll, I'll type answers to. And um, I want to welcome, I mentioned earlier, my student Lauren is here who really helped develop the pages about artist voices. And Lauren, do you wanna say a little bit about your experience working with those documents? Yeah, so my experience with the site was kind of backwards because I didn't engage with any of the art until very recently and I really only focused on the artist statement. So I really got to know the actual artists and like their stories and their inspirations and their communities a lot more than I got to know anything visually. So that was kind of a backwards process for me. But this past couple of weeks when I really started to be able to interact a lot more with the work, I was able to see these connections from these documents and statements I had read 
months ago. So that was a really cool experience for me. And I would really encourage everyone to take the time to look at the artist statements as well as the actual art, because you can find out so much about their inspiration, the materials they used. And there's a lot of innovation there that was out of necessity. That's really interesting and really fascinating. And I think that uh, just learning about their community and their inspiration for art is something that's a really valuable aspect that you can see in these artist statements. And we tried to organize the different statements and highlight ones that really stood out to me and my uh, the other student who worked on this project too, Rita, who isn't here right now, but really take the time to look at them because there are some really interesting just moments about their lives that you can even see in their art and their words. Thanks, Lauren. Um, I answered a question Tammy raised in the chat about seeing their loved ones uh, work on the site. Um, the site does have a search function, but it is not the most functional search function uh, in, in the history of websites. Um, so if you're having any trouble finding a piece by a particular artist or by your loved one, please email pcap at info at, sorry, PCAP info at umich.edu, um, and we will be more than happy to, to find that piece um, and help you see it online. Can I say something on that, Nora? Please, yeah. Um, I, I went to people, through different artists' names that I knew and just popped them into the search box, and they came up really easy. Uh, I thought it was very, the navigation was very easy, I thought. And I'm like, I tell everybody, I'm a first grader when it comes to tech stuff. If I can do it, anybody can do it. But I'm glad that you put that out there because if I find some artists that I don't know that I can't find their work to, I will definitely contact you guys. I know one other interesting thing that when I, when I think back to the packet question, the other thing that we also include is like cert certificates, participatory certificates and different things. And to me, sometimes I'm just like, wow, okay, just send everybody a certificate. But the truth of the reality is when people sit in front of a parole board, it's, it's a way of them sharing their association and consistency. And it has some quality it shares some qualities that become very useful. Um, so there's another layer. The other interesting thing that I find, and again, spend a certain amount of time on, is connecting with artists' families. So for instance, we just sent an exhibit to England and I connected some of the artists' mothers with the curator in England. So again, always trying to find ways to you know, enliven all of these, all of these connections. But it was really amazing some of the communications with the curator in England because the piece that that uh, Jacob did was a lioness and her cub, and Jacob too is a is a juvenile lifer. So he, I think, went to prison at fifteen. Um, he's now thirty one years old, and but his mother, the lioness, was just glowing like she was a glow with pastel. Um, just really beautiful to see all of that. And um, that's all. Thanks, Graham. Are there any other questions or um, pieces that uh, any of our tour attendees want to, to have our, our curator speak about a bit? talk a little bit about the um, one of the things that I found so impressive um, and impactful is just the limited uh, materials that people are using so just kind of some of the um, like some of the different kinds of ways that people are able to create out of uh, what was it um, cracker boxes and you know there's just so much that I think if you hadn't seen it it's hard to know to even ask that question, but I found that to be really powerful. So I don't know if there are pieces um, in mind or if you wanna, is there a, 
uh, you know, are there pieces that, or just to tell us a little bit about the kinds of different materials that people are using or the constraints that people are working within? I'm gonna share the three-dimensional gallery page while Graham and Martine talk about this, just so that we all have some, some art to look at while we learn from them. So I think this page speaks to your question, Liz. Yeah, that does. And there are a couple of pieces in there that you're gonna find that are just, you know, how can they do that with just a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper that is found out in the yard or in the trash or in the back of a, you know, the spiral binder. Well, no, actually you can't have spiral binders because it's wire and you can't have wire inside there. But uh, legal pads, the back the cardboard from legal pads, uh, the backs of cereal boxes, uh, cardboard boxes in the trash, um, little sticks and yarn that, you know, guys create so many wonderful pieces like you're seeing right there. Uh, yes, Liz, the materials that art can be created from is very limited, but so many artists, I mean, if you're an artist, you're going to create from whatever you have, from a pencil, a, you know, a number two pencil and a piece of paper, you can create some fantastic art. You can, you know, from a piece of cardboard, you can create objects that are just unimaginable. Last year there was, uh, actually there's, there's a piece, I don't know if it's in, in these images or not, I, didn't, I don't remember seeing it, but we've been talking about it. Actually it was the 25th, the 24th annual exhibit showpiece and it was Brian Pickens's robot. And you look at it, I mean, look at these things. You, this work right here, some of it is so technical, you know, detailed. It's just so detailed that you wonder how can you create something like this from a piece of cardboard? How can you create wheels with a piece of cardboard? Uh, feathers from a piece of paper. It's, it's very, you know, crude, but it's very believable. It's like, oh, wow. And what you don't see in these is especially this car right here, some of the things that are created inside there, because we can have batteries, you can actually make them move. And they, some guys have these little cars like this, battery operated, and they can zoom them down the hallway or out in the yard and guys are amazed and they're, and they're, and they're happy, you know, that they can create something that will bring a smile to other people's faces out of a piece of cardboard or a, 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 a bottle cap from, you know, a bottle of soda water or something, you know, or it's just amazing some of the things that can be created with just about nothing. String, you're seeing here, you know, some, some crochet. There are people inside there you know, guys, I know guys inside there were 300 pounds. They're big and you do not want to make them mad because they can hurt you. And you see them sitting on the bed crocheting, you know, a little flower on a pillowcase or something, you know, and you're like, or, or knitting mittens, you know, and you're like, you don't want to say anything other than, wow, that's some really good work you're doing there, buddy. But string art, you know, you get a piece of branch like this that you see there for the, for the dream catcher. You get a, a piece of uh, string, a little branch that happened that you happen to find out in the yard somewhere and you start creating dream catchers like this. This is art, you know, this is not technically, you know, proficient or fantastic, but it is art. And it not only passes the time away for some people, but it can make them feel healed in either a spiritual way, a psychological way. Uh, it's very healing to create art like this out of things that are just unimaginable. You know, how can you create a piece of art from, you know, a piece of plastic that you find in the yard or from a feather that a, bird's happen that a bird happens to drop in front of you? Actually, speaking about birds, sometimes guys wait in certain spots and they feed bread to the birds just so that, you know, they can leave behind some feathers so they can, you know, incorporate that into their artwork. 
It's very cool. You know, our, uh, too, Martin. To add on to that, the other thing that the other thing that you see too is um, you also see artists create new techniques uh, to use the materials that they have. So some of our more scholarly or practice painters, will, I'll sometimes talk to them because you'll see artists doing things with acrylic paints that normally an artist on the outside would go to oil for, but they, they can't get that material. So they, they create different techniques, which I, I find fascinating. Okay. Um, the other thing, and uh, Martin made me much more aware of this, um, was when you do order materials. Um, so each facility, you know, depending upon what level of security, which facility you're located in, you're only limited to a certain amount of materials and everything has to be ordered by your hobby craft director. But once you put an order in, it can be up to four, four months. Martin would know better, four months. So once you order something, you have almost half a year to wait on those materials, which is pretty, that's like a, quite the lag. Um, and then I think, I think when we look at it too, a lot of, which kind of makes sense to me in another light, the idea that probably, and I, I'm kind of stretching, but a lot of the artists that we work with are spending a certain amount of time in prison. There's, there's a population that goes in and comes out maybe for two years but if you got to wait six months to get materials, it's almost half of your time is waiting for the material. So um, it's kind of a crazy thing. Um, but again, you can see, it, as, you, as, as you were saying, you know, a lot of people are using cutouts from magazines. So all of these painted signs are really just little clip outs from magazines. And the, um, I know the feather, I've heard another feather story. It was uh, at Parnell when like a red tailed hawk came down and sat on a wire and everybody started to eye it up and a flight feather came, the bird was preening itself and a flight feather started to fall and everybody was always watching and it was a race for a flight feather, which is quite a gem, you know, but. Um, That's an amazing there. story. Creative people getting even more creative is, I mean, that's the community that you work with, you know, which is a, is a real privilege. And competitive, not just creative. Competitive <laughs> in the sense that somebody was gonna get that feather. Not everybody was gonna get the feather. So there's competition for material. There's competition for creativity. There's competition for, I can create a better painting than, than Martin did, or I can create a better painting than, Ma, than Montney or I can create a better painting than Chase Lynn. There's competition in, in art, you know, and, and some of the materials that you're speaking of, Graham, I remember going around and emptying maybe 50 pencil sharpeners, you know, to get the, the shavings to create a, uh, a base with glue and water and brown paint and I took all these pencil shavings and mixed them up and created texture for a uh, buffalo painting that I was doing and created fur on a buffalo. And once it's painted and chiseled out a little bit and sanded, it, it looks very, very real. So there's sand out in this outside in the yard and the ball diamonds that you can get. There's grass that you can create texture with. There's, yes, you're right. Artists will find something to create, to, 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 to get a little bit better. How can I increase my creativity in this painting? I want this painting to look and feel like rocks on the beach or sand on the beach. Well, you go get real sand from the ball diamond and you put it down there and it works. Well, thank but, you. Oh, sorry, Martina. No, no, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I'm keeping an eye on the clock um, and we're, we're right at one, um, so I want to thank our, our curators uh, for, for being here and for sharing their perspectives and for everyone, for, for, ever, for all of you for attending. Uh, we'll have another tour this coming Saturday and again a week from today, um, and there will be different curators at each, at each tour, so we will highlight different pieces, hear different stories. 
Um, so please come back again, <laughs> even if you're able to, to join uh, this morning. Um, and yeah, I am really grateful to you all um, for, for spending some time looking uh, at, at the show today. So thank you.